comes in well or whatever how it comes in we'd like to hear from you and let let me know that you're listening i appreciate it very much i want to pick up i hope you were there this morning if you wasn't at the at the service if you heard it on zoom uh recognizing the kingdom of satan and we studied the principle of the war of the saints between God and Satan and the kingdom of God versus the kingdom of Satan. I'll read again Ephesians 6, 12, a key verse in the spiritual warfare. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, that's human bodies, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We didn't finish that this morning, so we're going to just jump in there. We see where their battle is with rulers of darkness, with rulers of evil. The word there comes from a word that means rulership. It's talking about the rulership of the devil and his demons. And actually in the Greek, uh, it says Lord of the world, Lord of the world. Rulers speaking of relationships. And it means uh, also it includes the levels of, of rank, of authority. And Satan has a chain of command. He has a different levels of authority as chiefs and uh, sub-chiefs and uh, these demonic forces uh, operate in different areas of, of authority and uh, sub-rulers have sub-areas of, of authority and Satan works through this structure and we're studying the nature and the structure of the kingdom of Satan, how to recognize it. Now Satan's kingdom, as I said, has a chain of command. And the chain of command has different ranks. And so we find in this chapter 6, verse 12, it speaks of uh, rulers in high places and of the world, spiritual wickedness of this world. So Satan's power reaches into world uh, domination. And he is the dominant being over the present world darkness. And even the word domin dominate is a satanic word. And you in and, and the word dome, D-O-M. Satan's goal is to dominate the entire world. And my friends, when you see two thirds of the world has gone to Islam and other religions and, and Christianity is shrinking and especially the true Bible believing uh, uh, conservative believers, then it appears that Satan is very close to his one world government and his one world a church which will arrive during the book of Revelation and the Great Tribulation. So the nearer we are to that, the nearer we are to Satan having world domination, which he's always strived to have since the very beginning with his first temptation of Eve and on down. So uh, Satan seems to have just about everything under his realm of authority, uh, except for a very small remnant of Bible-believing, conservative-minded Christians that Jesus is Lord, the Bible is his authority for our life. And I have to include also Judaism, which Judaism follows the God Jehovah, and follows the Old Testament. And so now there's a lot of liberal Jews, there's moderate Jews, and then there's 
Orthodox conservative Jews. And Satan has his foothold in many of the Christians, or for Christian church, I should say, professing Christians, re religious organizations, and Judaism. But Christianity and Judaism, in the pure form of it, is about the only thing Satan doesn't seem to control uh, today. And all the other religions, Satan controls them. And uh, he's very comfortable in religion and he thrives in it, and also governments. And this includes the communists and socialist nations that are, of course, under Satan and anti-God. So we see that God's kingdom, in comparison and contrast to the devil, God's kingdom is a kingdom of light. And Satan, as in this verse tells us, Satan's kingdom is a kingdom of darkness. Now, most people today, the majority, are following Satan. And those that are following Satan are spiritually blind, which is, uh, goes along with the darkness, blindness and darkness. They're deceived. And many of them don't even know that they're serving the devil because he wants to keep that hidden. Matter of fact, I uh, learned this a long time ago, that Satan's favorite disguise is to pretend that you, that he is you. One man said, if you want to see his favorite disguise, look in the mirror. And that's the one the devil's using. He wants to use the power suggested into your mind to put thoughts in your mind and make, and you think they're your thoughts which really they originated from Satan. And that's where the battle of the mind comes in. Now there in 612 also speaks of a spiritual host of, of wickedness in high places or the heavenlies. Uh, I want to deal with a little uh, a confusion here on theology, you might say. And that is a lot of people, if not most people, think Satan is in hell, that he's ruling in hell like some government or some metropolitan city or something. Now, uh, the, uh, that would be nice if it were true, but it's not true. Satan is not in hell yet. Matthew 28, 41, the, the lake of fire was created when Satan fell, and I got into that this morning, it was created for the devil and his angels. But Satan has, it's been postponed to put Satan in hell or the lake of fire till Revelation chapter 20, the end time. So Satan, as I, I let me go over it again just quickly. The Bible tells us in Revelation 20 verse three, that Satan is going to be put in the bottomless pit uh, following the, rebel, the uh, tribulation, seven-year tribulation, at the beginning of the reign of Christ, millennial thousand-year reign in Jerusalem and throughout the world. Satan will be held in the bottomless pit during the 1,000 years uh, of Christ on ruling on earth. Then the Bible says in chapter 20, verse 3, that he will be loose for a short while. And uh, the beast and the false prophet, they've already been put into the lake of fire alive, the Bible said, Revelation 19, 20. So that proceeds, uh, that happens about the same time Satan's put in the bottomless pit. And... Uh, they're actually the first to go into the lake of fire that has been created since the fall of Satan. Now, uh, next, after that, the Bible says that de the devil, death, and hell, the Greek word there is Hades, are cast into the lake of fire where the beast and the prophet are, 
to be tormented day and night forever and ever, and that will be the finality of Satan as far he will be then in the eternal penitentiary of the lake of fire that was created for him in the beginning. So uh, as I said, the New Testament word, some people confuse hell and Hades. Uh, Hades is just the Greek word for hell. The Old Testament word for hell is Sheol. And both hell is, is separate from the lake of fire. They're two different places. And that's why it says hell, death and hell are cast into the lake of fire. So it's like the penitentiary and hell is like the jail holding till the final uh, trial at the great white throne judgment and then they will be put into the lake of fire. Now, uh, so we see that Satan's kingdom is not hell. That's why I brought that up. It's not hell like some people believe. Well, how did the, how did the kingdom of Satan come into being? Please take your Bibles. You'll need to look at these verses carefully with me. Take your Bibles to uh, a key passage in Isaiah 14, Isaiah 14, and Ezekiel 28. But we probably won't get to Ezekiel 28 till next Sunday. But let's look at Isaiah 14. Now, this is very, very important. Let's look at an overview of it, and then we will come back and study it. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Son of the morning, that's what his name means. How art thou come down to the ground which thou didst which thou didst wake, weaken the nations? For thou hast uh, excuse me about my eyes are blurry tonight. For thou hast an said and in, in thine heart. I will ascend, thou hast said in thine heart, there we go, right? That's right. Thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend unto heaven. I'll exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation on the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be alike or equal to the most high. So we see here the word Lucifer in Hebrew means light bearer, means brightness, or the morning star. Now he was the archangel. Uh, I believe there was three, Michael, Gabriel, and Lucifer. And um, uh, Gabriel is the messenger angel, and Michael is the war angel, and Satan was the praise angel and worship angel, and he was above all others. So he was an archangel. He was second in rank only to God himself. And of course the word arch means over. An archbishop means a bishop that's over other bishops. So the word arch means uh, that he was a ruling angel. He was over, he's a ruling angel. And uh, he was so various glory, he was so glorious and beautiful and had filled him with pride. Now he decided that he didn't want to lead heaven to worship and glorify God, but he wanted to be God himself. So he devised a plan to try to replace God or to be equal with God. He coveted the glory and the praise of being God. And so he became, but he became filled with himself. He became filled with foolish pride. And as a result, Lucifer rebelled. He fell from the glory of God and became Satan or the devil. Don't misunderstand because God did not create the devil. He did not create Satan. Say he created Lucifer, and Lucifer became Satan. He became the devil. Originally, 
Uh, Lucifer was without sin in the beginning, but then he rebelled against God and the glory departed. So he tried to make himself equal with God, like so many today are preaching equality, but in the wrong way. And, uh, and, and they want to be really above everybody else. And that's the way the devil meant it. He wanted to be equal with God by meaning equal that he had the authority of God and he could rule as God. So uh, when he came down to earth and tempted the first human beings, he first came to Eve and uh, he tempted her with the same desire. You obey, disobey God and you'll be like God or equal with God and you won't be under your husband anymore. And so that she fell into that snare and she followed the very same pattern of Satan's fall. That's interesting how Satan will use his steps of fall and failure to get you to fail and you to fall from God. Now, Lucifer wants to replace and defeat Jesus more than anything else. Overall, the Mormons teach that Jesus and, and Lucifer were brothers. That's not true at all. Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. Lucifer is a created angel. Stay with the Bible, uh, not any, anything else. Don't, study, don't follow the Book of Mormon or the Jehovah Witnesses book. Follow the Bible, the Word of God. It's truth. And man, as the devil's tried to rewrite the Bible, he's tried to all these modern perversions that change just enough to just deceive you and to get you away from God. It really attacks the deity of God, the virgin birth and pure and and and, more, and, and the holy living. So anyway, but Satan tried to make himself equal with God that he might, he overall wants to defeat Jesus because he covets the, the, the glory and the power and the praise that belongs rightfully only to the Son of God, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, so we'll repeat what we said this morning. There's, there's two kingdoms and they're ever at war. Now, Lucifer, the, because he is a created being, it's not possible for him to be equal with God who is uncreated. But that doesn't keep him from trying, and he will try. And though he's been defeated so many times in the last 6,000 years, he never gives up. And, uh, and he won't give up until Revelation 20, when he's put into the uh, lake of fire. So Satan, the nearer, the closer the end gets, the worse he will get, the more desperate he will get and because he knows what the Bible says and he wants to do everything he can. If he can't stop it all together, he wants to delay it. And so that's why he wants a carnal backslid worldly church because it will cause a, maybe a delay of God uh, rapturing the church. I, I don't know that's a possibility. But Lucifer, in his arrogant pride, he rebelled. He exalted himself, and as a result, God cast him down, and he fell from the third heaven. Now, Jesus, in total opposite to that, he totally humbled himself. He took the form of a servant. He gave himself as a total sacrifice to save our souls, and then God said he exalted him and given him a name that's above every name, and he gave him all authority in heaven and in earth. Now let's go back to Isaiah 14, in verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? And how dost thou, uh, how art thou cut down to the ground, which would, did weaken the nation? So look at verse 13. 13, we find the devil's motivation. In verse 13, he had, he said, I will five times. And here is the, the creature 
say is set against the will of the Creator. And this is where the kingdom of Satan uh, began and came from. The key word in the beginning of the kingdom of Satan and continuing of the kingdom of Satan is the word rebellion. Satan rebelled. And Satan, as a result, will do everything in his utmost to get you to rebel against God and God's ordained authority, whether it be in the home, the church, employment, or government, wherever there's a structure of God ordained authority, Satan is going to try to get you to take your will and go against the, uh, their will. <laughs> Children against parents, wives against husbands, and, uh, and, and so forth. Rebellion puts you under Satan's dominion, and that's called witchcraft. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. In other words, it puts you under the dominion and the authority and the rule of the devil, whether you realize it or not. Submit to God. Get under his authority and his will and resist the devil and he'll flee from you. But opposite, if you rebel against God, you're submitting to the devil and he will rule over you. So uh, every area of our life is affected by this war between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of, of, of Satan. And we need to realize that. And that's why I'm preaching this tonight and, be, and laying down some principles to affect our Christian life, to try to find out why many people are defeated. So we'll either defeat the devil or the devil's going to defeat us. Now look there again in Isaiah 14, 13. And uh, notice what it says. You have said in your heart. Do you know God knows everything you say in your heart? Everything you think in your heart, you desire in your heart. God knows your heart. Well, he knew the devil's heart, and he said, you have said in your heart. And what did the devil say? He said, number one, I will ascend. Well, notice the ex exaltation of himself, always going up. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high God. See, the word like means equal to God. And so, uh, like the most, and the word uh, most high means referring to almighty God. So I want to be equal, he said, and I will be equal uh, to almighty God. Notice Satan in his fall, he was trying to always go upward, always go higher, always go above and be equal with God. He was so beautiful, so glorious, so gorgeous, so full of wisdom and pride that he actually believed he could be God himself. And he probably used that same self-deceit on the angels to flatter them. Oh, if I was God, I would treat you better. If I was God, I'd recognize you. If I was God, I would, and he would flatter them and seduce them into thinking they would be better off following, the, following Lucifer uh, than following the true God of heaven. So he managed to persuade and influence one third of the angels to follow him in rebellion against God. Look at him, he had a tremendous, uh, attractive and powerful personality. He had great charm. He had overwhelming beauty and attractiveness. He had a tremendous intellect, second to only to God. He had, and he was, as a result of all these qualities, he was a supreme negotiator and persuader of, of, of these angels. Now, another thing that made it easier for him to get this following, they'd already been used to following him and worship. 
because Satan or Lucifer was the praise and worship director of heaven. So they was already used to him being over them. They were used to him telling them what to do and how to worship God and leading them in worship. So that made it that much easier for them to follow him. Now, by the way, when we see all the power and attributes that Satan had, we realize we are no mortal person on earth, no human flesh and blood being as any match for Satan. And the only way we can be victorious over him is through total submission and dependence on Jesus. And if we are, we can be more than a conqueror through him. And then we submit to God, resist the devil, and he uh, flew flee from you. I find it interesting that Satan started his kingdom in heaven. Every, it all started in heaven. Think of that. Now, Lucifer undermined the loyalty to God among a third of heaven. He's out to get you to be disloyal, to quit, to give up, to turn against God, to be dissatisfied, to find fault with God. But you know, the consequences always will outweigh any benefits or pleasure you might think you'll get if you, if you quit serving God. Well, as a result, what did God do? We see that there in verse 15. Yea, thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of Sheol, the pit, to the pit. This is God's divine retribution. There's payday someday. And Satan, the Lucifer, he didn't go up. God took him down, down and down. So the sore of discord, the, re re the rebel uh, was brought down. Lucifer became Satan and he was kicked out of the third heaven. And so where did he go? And where is his kingdom right now? And next Sunday, Lord willing, I'll give you some of the most interesting uh, information on this subject you could possibly realize. So where did this kingdom come from? And we'll look in, in Ezekiel uh, chapter 28, and uh, it speaks of the prince of Tyre in one portion, and then the king of Tyre in another. One was a man, one was not a man, and we're going we're gonna to get in into that and see how Satan used these identities uh, to deceive the world. Our Father God, we pray now, Lord, that you'll take this message, enlighten us, inform us, equip us, Lord, to, to take on the whole armor of God, to withstand the wiles of the devil, to be faithful to our calling to thee, to put, Lord, our battle, battle in array, and, Lord, to not let the devil sow seeds of discord in our mind between us and thee and between us and the church and our brothers and sisters in Christ. And Lord, he's a sword of discord. He sows rebellion against authority in the hearts of wives, the hearts of, of children, the hearts of employees, and the heart, heart of citizens for the wrong uh, reason like we're seeing in the streets of America. We know that Satan is the author of rebellion, and rebellion is under the domain of witchcraft, and uh, Satan's behind all witchcraft. And people are practicing witchcraft when they rebel against thee, when they rebel against authority. And I pray today that if we have anyone listening today that have rebellion in their heart, oh God, they maybe want to be equal with their authority. They want to go against their God-ordained authority. I pray, Lord, they'd be wise and ask your forgiveness to take that away out of them and give them a humble heart, a humble, submitted spirit, and submit their will uh, to your will and follow uh, the example of Jesus and the walk in his steps. Oh, God, we pray. We'll never have revival without humility. We'll never have revival without repentance, oh, Lord. Uh, Oh, God, work on our hearts uh, and bring us to repentance. Bring us, humble our hearts. 
We turn from our wicked ways. Stop wanting to be our own boss. Stop wanting to, to argue with you and strive with you and think that we could do it better if we was in charge. Lord, the best we can do without you is fail and turn into a disaster. Help us to humble ourselves. Uh, oh, Lord, lift them out of the miry clay and the horrible pit as you did, David. Set our feet on the rock of ages, a solid ground. And, Lord, let we go and serve you, dear Lord Jesus, for your honor, praise, and glory. We ask these things in your wonderful, a blessed, mighty name. And amen. And amen.